بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على سيدنا محمد سيد الأولين والآخرين وعلى جميع إخوانه من النبيين والمرسلين وآل كل وصحب كل ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما يا رب العالمين All praise is due to Allah and may Allah raise the rank of Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him and protect his nation from that which he fears for them. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to increase our knowledge and benefit us with the knowledge we have acquired. Ameen. In our previous topic, we started talking about the angels. That one of the tenets of Iman is to believe in the existence of the angels. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, آمَنَ الرَّسُولُ بِمَا أُنزِلَ إِلَيْهِ مِنْ رَبِّهِ وَالْمُؤْمِنُونَ كُلٌّ آمَنَ بِاللَّهِ وَمَلَائِكَتِهِ وَكُتُبِهِ وَرُسُلِهِ Which means all the believers believe in Allah Azza wa Jal, believe in the existence of the angels, believe in the revealed books, and believe in the prophets and messengers. The believers believe in all of the prophets and messengers. They don't believe in some and disbelieve in others. So we as Muslims believe in all of the prophets that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent to people to guide them, to teach them whatever is beneficial for them in this life and in the hereafter. So we believe in Prophet Adam, the first human being and the first prophet as well as all the prophets that came after him, including Prophet Noah, Prophet Abraham, Prophet Moses, Prophet Jesus, up to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon all of them. So one of the fundamentals of the Muslims' belief is to believe in the angels. Because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us about them and everything the Prophet والسلام, conveyed from Allah is truth. We must accept whatever he conveyed from Allah Azza wa Jal because the Prophet does not lie, does not fabricate things. All what he mentioned about religion was through a revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whether it was amongst the matters pertaining to the beginning of the creation or about the previous nations or about what's going to happen in the future from the signs of the day of judgment or about the matters of the hereafter or about deeming something permissible or deeming something forbidden. All of these matters the Prophet ﷺ taught us about, he is truthful in all of them. Amongst what the Prophet ﷺ taught us about is to believe in the existence of the angels and jinn. The Prophet وسلم, said in the hadith, Allah created the angels from light, created the jinn from pure flame of fire, 
and created Adam from which was described for you. That is from clay. The angels, different from the jinn and different from mankind. These are three different types of creations. Humans, angels, and jinn. They have certain things in common, but they differ in other matters. And we are going to explain this, inshallah. So we must believe in the existence of the angels and that they are honored slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah honored them, purified them. Allah created them from light. So their bodies are intangible and they are created from light. Intangible meaning cannot be grasped by hand. Cannot be grasped by hand. The angels have minds so they think and they have will they choose to do something however they only choose to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we have a will we choose to do the right and we choose to do the wrong sometimes we do the right thing by our will sometimes we do the wrong thing by our will but the angels, although they have will, like us, but they only choose to obey Allah Azza wa Jal. So they fulfill whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered them to do, and they avoid whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forbade them from doing. So they never disobey Allah Azza wa Jal. And they always fulfill the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And because of that, all the angels are classified as righteous slaves of Allah. In Arabic they say awliya. They are all awliya. All the angels are awliya. If a human being were to reach the status of wilaya become a wali, a righteous believer, he needs to fulfill the obligations, avoid the prohibitions, and perform a lot of optional rewardable deeds, and remain steadfast on this path for a while until he reaches that stage of righteousness, they call it al wilaya. When he becomes a wali, that means he has secured paradise. He has secured dying as a believer. Because the wali, or the person after becoming a wali, does not fall into blasphemy. He becomes protected by Allah Azza wa Jal from falling into blasphemy. From the human beings, although those who reach righteousness wilaya, but they might fall into sins, but they don't fall into blasphemy. So once they become righteous awliya, they are protected from falling into blasphemy, from dying on other than the state of Islam. They are protected from that, but they might fall into some sins. As it happened, in the past, among some of the righteous who fell into a sin, but they repent before they die, and they die in a good state, because once they have reached righteousness, they have secured paradise and dying as believers. Since the angels never disobey Allah Azza wa Jal, they always obey Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. For that reason. For that reason, they are all awliya, righteous. So they spend their time obeying Allah Azza wa Jal, and that's by their will. 
So they are not like, uh, for instance, a feather suspended in the air and the wind takes it right and left. They have no will. No, that's not the case. They have will. But with their will, they only choose to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why all of them are awliya and they are honored slaves by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the angels are all righteous, pious. They never fall into a sin because Allah Azza wa Jal protected them from sinning. So there is no blasphemer amongst the angels and there is no sinner amongst the angels. In contrary to the situation of jinn and mankind, you find amongst jinn and mankind those who are believers and those who are not believers. Those who are pious, righteous, and those who are sinful. So humans and jinn, they obey Allah Azza wa Jal and they disobey Allah Azza wa Jal. Except for those whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protected from falling into a sin. But angels never disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As for the jinn, they are created from the pure flame of fire. So there are different creations from angels. They are created from the pure flame of fire. And you find amongst them, as you find amongst the humans, those who are believers and righteous and those who are blasphemers and sinners. But most of the jinn are non-believers and most of the believers are sinners. They have natural powers more than powers given to human beings in the norm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them the ability to take different forms and shapes because they are intangible bodies as we mentioned. So Allah gave them the power to take a shape or a form of different things. They might be able to take the shape of a human being or an animal and the like. They can come to people in different shapes. The angels are creations that are not seen, that are not seen usually by humans. Also, the jinn are not seen by humans. No one can see the angels except those whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala willed for to see them. A Muslim may see the angels. A non-Muslim may see the angels. But for each person, it is interpreted based on his situation. In the battle of Badr, between the believers and the non-believers, the non-believers from the pagans of Mecca saw the angels fighting them. They saw the angels fighting them coming from the uh, skies to earth on horses. And that's why they became terrified. Also in this battle, the battle of Badr, Iblis came to the non-believers in the form of a person called Suraqa ibn Malik. Suraqa ibn Malik. 
This person was known from a certain tribe. And the pagans of Mecca were worried if they were to go and fight the Prophet wasallam and his companions that this a tribe might attack them from behind. So Iblis, to encourage them to fight the Prophet and the companions, came in the shape of Suraqa ibn Malik from that tribe. So he took his shape and he said to them, I guarantee you that my tribe, my tribe won't attack you from behind. So you can keep moving and fight the Prophet and his companions. When he came to the battlefield, so he was in the shape of a human being. When he came, he saw the angels descending. He saw them descending. So he started running away. The non-believers said to him, Where are you going, O Suraqa? Didn't you say that you want to protect us or you guarantee for us that uh, your tribe won't attack us? Then he said to them, I see what you cannot see. And he ran away. So the non-believers may see the angels. And some believers, Allah may honor them, and they see the angels. They might see them in their original form with wings, or they might see them when they take a shape of men, but of course without the private parts and without the inner parts. Because the angels are different, as we mentioned before, from humans and jinn. Angels are not males or females. They do not eat, they do not drink, they do not sleep. They do not get tired. They do not reproduce. So this is the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created them. However, the jinn, we cannot see them in their original form. We see them only when they take the shape of a human being and the like. That's when we see them. Because Allah said in the Quran about Iblis, إِنَّهُ يَرَاكُمْ هُوَ وَقَبِيلُهُ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا تَرَوْنَهُمْ He sees you and his offspring see you as well, but you do not see them. So Iblis, that's the father of the jinn. The first jinn Allah created is Iblis. The first human Allah created is Adam alayhi salam. So Iblis and his offspring can see us, but we cannot see them. That's the meaning of this verse. So we cannot see them in their original form, the way they are created. But they might come in the shape of a human being. As the hadith of the Prophet wasallam, that a companion met one of the jinn on the way. And he knew he was a jinn, wasn't a human. And he said to him, what would protect us from you as humans? to be protected from the jinn, from you. Then that devil, jinn, who was an unbeliever, he said this verse, the verse of Al-Kursi, Ayatul Kursi. When you recite it, that's a protection for you from the devil. Then this companion continued his way until he came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he told him about what happened, how he met this devil. 
and he asked him what would protect us from you and he said the verse of Al-Kursi the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam then said Sadaq Al-Khabis Khabis the wicked the wicked is right meaning this devil wicked devil is right in what he mentioned that this verse is a protection for the believers from the devil Iblis before he committed blasphemy by objecting to Allah Azza wa Jal he used to live in paradise and he used to be with the angels he used to worship Allah Azza wa Jal with the angels so he was with the angels and he used to worship Allah as they do as well but his type of creation is different from the type of the angels Allah Ta'ala said وَإِذْ قُلْنَا لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ اسْجُدُوا لِآدَمَ فَسَجَدُوا إِلَّا إِبْلِيسَ كَانَ مِنَ الْجِنِّ فَفَسَقَ عَنْ أَمْرِ رَبِّهِ Meaning Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala ordered the angels and Iblis to make prostration, sujood to Adam out of salutation and glorification all the angels did but Iblis refused he used to be with the angels he refused and he disobeyed the order of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala because when Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala ordered the angel to come to earth and grab from all types of soil on earth from the black and the white and what is between from the hard and the soft and what is between that from the good soil and the bad soil and what is in between so he grabbed from all types of soils then he went up to paradise in paradise that soil was dealt with water it became clay then it was shaped in the shape of Adam and was left was left for a while like this only clay Iblis who was living in paradise started staring at Adam when he was only clay and he started turning around him observing him closely he realized that he has inner parts so he knew that he is not an angel because these inner parts that means he is in need of food and drink so he knew that he is different from angels and he said to him for a reason you are created for a reason you are created until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered the soul to be blown into Adam that's when he became alive Adam sneezed when the soul entered his body and the first word he uttered was Alhamdulillah Alhamdulillah praise be to Allah then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered him to go and greet the angels and then they will greet him back and that will be the greeting for him and his offspring later then Allah azza wa jal for a wisdom to show that this type of creation mankind as a type not individuals all individuals as a type type of creation the type of mankind is better than the type of angels and better than the type of jinn why because amongst mankind are the prophets and the messengers 
who are the best of all the creations of Allah Azza wa Jal, the prophets and the messengers. So this type of creation, mankind, is better than the type of angels and better than the type of jinn. So Allah ordered the angels as well as Iblis, whose name was Azazil, before he committed blasphemy, who was the first jinn Allah created, to prostrate to Adam. And that prostration was not to worship Adam, because Allah wouldn't order any creation to prostrate to another creation for worship. Rather, it was for salutation. The angels prostrated, fulfilled the order of Allah. They never disobey Allah. Iblis was jealous of Adam. And he said, why should I prostrate to him when I'm better than him? I'm a better creation. You created me from pure flame of fire and you created him from clay. So Iblis was claiming that his type is better than the type of creation of Adam because he was created from pure flame of fire and Adam was created from clay. He objected to Allah. By objecting to Allah, he fell into blasphemy. That's when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala banished him out of paradise. And he became cursed and away from the mercy of Allah, away from goodness, until the day of a judgment. So he will remain as a non-believer, as a blasphemer, till the day of a judgment, on the day of a judgment, Iblis and the devils who followed him will be in hellfire. When Allah banished him out of paradise, Iblis requested something. He requested of Allah that Allah would keep him alive until the day of resurrection. So he won't taste death. He doesn't want to taste death. He requested of Allah to keep him alive until the day of resurrection, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informed him that he will be alive until the day of the hour, the day of the occurrence of the, of the hour, which is the day of the judgment. That's when everyone on earth will die and everyone in the skies will die except those who are exempted and we'll talk about them uh, soon insha'Allah Azza wa Jal. So Iblis became an unbeliever. That's why he was given this name Iblis. In Arabic it means the one who is far from goodness, far from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The angels, however, never take the shape of females. So in contrary to the creation of the jinn, the jinn, they get married and they reproduce and they take different uh, shapes as we mentioned. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made in the jinn the instinct for eating and drinking and collecting money like mankind. But the angels, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, saves them from having any need to food, drink, or woman. 
That's why when you hear the story about the guests who came to Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam, Allah mentioned them in the Quran. They came to Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam to tell him that the people of Prophet Lut alayhi salam will be destroyed. And Prophet Lut alayhi salam is the nephew of Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam. So these angels, as they were heading to the tribe of Prophet Lut to tell Lut alayhi salam to leave, and that these towns of the people of Lut will be destroyed, they passed by Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam. When they came to him, First of all, he didn't know they are angels. They took the shape of men. And when they take the shape of men, as we mentioned, without the private parts, without the inner parts, only the outer shape, like men. When they came to him, out of his generosity, he went and slaughtered a bull that he had and prepared food for them, and he put the food in front of them but they did not touch that food, not even one bite, because they don't eat. Then, upon this, when he saw that they are not extending their hands to eat, he started becoming worried. And who are these people? He's done what he's done, and now they are not eating. Then they told him that they are angels sent by Allah Azza wa Jal, and they are heading to Prophet Lut alayhi salam, and that his people will be destroyed. So angels do not eat, do not drink, do not sleep, and do not get tired. And all the angels are fond of obeying Allah Azza wa Jal. They like to spend the time in obeying Allah Azza wa Jal. As the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in the hadith that in each sky at every distance of four fingers there is an angel who is praying. So the skies are congested with angels, crowded with angels who are obeying Allah Azza wa Jal. And the number of angels is way more than the number of humans and jinn altogether. Altogether. It is said that the number of humans and jinn in comparison to the number of angels is like a drop in an ocean. A drop in an ocean. So the number is very vast, way more than the number of humans and jinn. So they are fond of obeying Allah and they never disobey Allah Azza wa Jal whatsoever. So the story that is fabricated about two angels, you must not believe in it. You must reject it. The story that's what happened. I'll mention what is correct first. It's about two angels, Harut and Marut, mentioned in the Quran. وَمَا أُنزِلَ عَلَى الْمَلَكَيْنِ بِبَابِلَ هَارُوتَ وَمَارُوتَ Two angels were sent down to earth. They started teaching people how sorcery is made. Not for people to practice sorcery, rather just to differentiate between sorcery and miracles. Because some people may not be able to differentiate between them. If they see someone practicing sorcery, they think he is a prophet. And that's a miracle. They wanted them to know and that's the order from Allah, how to differentiate between a miracle and sorcery. 
So these two angels started teaching people how sorcery is made. And they told them that we are a test for you. Meaning, we are teaching you how sorcery is made, but not for you to practice it. Rather to differentiate between sorcery and miracles. If you practice the sorcery we are teaching you, you are sinful. That's the test. So people are getting aware of how sorcery is made, but at the same time, they are not allowed to practice sorcery. That was the test for them. So only for them to know. They taught them, fulfilled this task, then they went back up. That was the whole story mentioned in the Quran. Some fabricated things about these two angels. And they said that these two angels, after they came down to earth, they fell in love with a lady and they drank alcohol and they got seduced by this lady. They call, it, they call her as Zuhra. That's what they say. Uh, they were seduced by her and then they committed fornication and they killed a child. All that is a fabrication. Angels do not disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this story must be omitted from some books. Unfortunately, some mention that story in their books. And maybe if you search the internet, you might find it written here and there. Some people from Al Mufassirin, those who interpreted the Quran, interpreters of the Quran, had mentioned this story without saying that this story is fabricated. That's why the knowledge of the religion is not taken by reading books or reading through the internet. No. You need to make sure that you are getting the correct knowledge. You need to seek the knowledge from the trustworthy Muslims who took the knowledge from those who are trustworthy and those in turn took it from others who are trustworthy until you go back with that chain to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. As for the actual form of the angels, they are angels with wings. Angels with wings. So they have face, they have mouth, they have hands, they have shoulders, that's mentioned about them, and they have wings. Allah Ta'ala said, Alhamdulillahi fatiri samawati wal ard, ja'ili al-malaikati rusulan uli ajnihatim masna wa sulasa wa ruba' yazidu fil khalq ma yasha' Allah created the angels with wings. Some have two wings, some have three, some have four, some more. Some have 600 wings, like Angel Jibreel alayhi salam. He has 600 wings. And the Prophet alayhi salatu was salam saw him twice in his original form. The first one, when he was in Mecca, in a place called Ajiyad. He used to come to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the shape of one of the companions who was very handsome. They call him Dihya. His name was Dihya. And Aisha Radiallahu Anha, the wife of the Prophet, saw him once, but she didn't know he was an angel. She thought that was Dihya, the companion. Because they have beautiful images, the angels. So he came in the form of this companion, meaning similar to him. 
and his name was Dihya. Aisha saw him. It's like you see a human being and you don't know him. It was mentioned that Al-Irbad ibn Sariya, one of the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, was in the region of Asham and he grew old and he became so tired from this life. He's one of the companions of the Prophet. But he started making dua, saying, Allahumma qubidni ilayka ghayra maftoon. Meaning, oh Allah, take my soul out before I get seduced or tempted by the temptations of this world. So he was actually asking for his life to be taken. He saw someone next to him who approached him saying, don't say this. He looked at him and said, what should I say? Oh, my nephew, the Arabs sometimes, they use that term nephew, not for the real nephew. They mean, you are a human being like me. So they use it in that context. So he thought he is one of the believers that came to the mosque. So he said, what should I say? And he said to him, say, Allahumma hassin al-amal wa ballig al-ajal. Meaning, oh Allah, grant us to perform the good deeds and to finish our lifespan while performing these good deeds. Then he asked him, and who are you? He thought he is a human being. That's why he called him nephew. He said, I am Rata'il. Rata'il, one of the angels in charge of taking the sadness out of the hearts of the believers. So, he might come to a pious slave who is struck with sadness and grief and he takes away the sadness and the grief of that person by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he saw him in what way? In the form of a human being. In the real form with wings, that's very rare to happen. It's very rare to happen but some righteous believers did see some angels in the original form with wings, especially during the night of Al-Qadr in Ramadan. Some was honored to see the angels in their original form during the night of Al-Qadr. May Allah grant us this virtue, insha'Allah Azza wa Jal. So Jibreel came to the Prophet in the shape of a human being. And the Prophet was at a place called a jihad. And Jibreel said to the Prophet, ask your Lord to allow you to see me in my original form with 600 wings. So he supplicated Allah Azza wa Jal, asking Allah Azza wa Jal to allow him to see Jibreel in his original form. Jibreel disappeared as a human being. Then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was watching the horizon. All what he can see in the whole horizon is Jibreel Alayhi Salam. Because one wing would cover between east and west. How about 600 wings? And Jibreel Alayhi Salam is so beautiful. His wings falls off them the ruby and the pearl fall off his wings. So when he came from the horizon, blocking the whole horizon, the Prophet ﷺ was looking at him. He couldn't bear that scene. So the Prophet fainted. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Jibreel came back to his human form and hugged the Prophet until the Prophet became conscious again. 
Despite this, Jibreel is not the biggest of the angels in size. He is the best of the angels. He is a leader for them. And he is the most powerful amongst the angels. But he is not the biggest in size. There are angels who are carrying the arsh. There are four now. And on the day for judgment, there will be eight. The Prophet ﷺ said in the hadith, I was given permission to talk about one of those angels carrying the arsh. The distance between his earlobe and his shoulder is 700 years traveled by a bird flying down. Imagine a bird flying down 700 years. This is to travel that distance between his earlobe and his shoulder. So they are bigger in size. But Jibreel alayhi salam is more powerful. Allah said about him, Zu mirratin fastawa. Zu mirra, meaning he is very powerful. Allah gave him that power. Remember when we told you that those angels that visited Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam told him about what's going to happen to the people of Prophet Lut alayhi salam. So they went to tell Prophet Lut alayhi salam to leave with the believers. And subhanallah, only one house of believing people were there. So Prophet Lut alayhi salam left. His wife was not a believer. So she was left behind. After they left, only the non-believers remained in these four or five towns for the people of Lut. Jibreel alayhi salam came down with one feather of a wing. He was able to root out the four or five towns and he put them up close to the first sky. The angels in the first sky was able to hear the dogs barking and the roosters crowing. Then he turned them upside down. The four or five towns and smashed them back into earth. This area is next to the Dead Sea in Jordan. It's the lowest, the lowest a spot on earth. When you go to pass by that place, as you are driving, for instance, you reach a stage where it tells you now the mark, you are zero meters from the surface of the sea. Then you keep driving down. So as if you are going down in the sea, you drive down, down, down until you reach next to the Dead Sea. And that's, uh, subhanAllah, when I went there and uh, they took us to that place, as he was driving, you can feel the pressure on your ears. It's like you're diving down. That's where he smashed them against the earth. It's very low area and uh, the high pressure as well, as if you are diving. This is how powerful angel Jibreel alayhi salam was. Also it was mentioned that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam once was prostrating before the Kaaba in Mecca. In Mecca, you know, in Saudi Arabia. So he was making sujood before the Kaaba. Iblis billah, said to his Group, the devils, you will see, I'll put my foot on the neck of Muhammad. He said to them, I'll put my foot on the neck of Muhammad. 
as he came closer to the Prophet alayhi salatu was salam, Jibreel alayhi salam came and kicked him by his foot. Iblis ended up in Iraq. Had it meant for Iblis to die at that moment, he would have died from that kick by Angel Jibreel alayhi salam. These matters are known by knowledge. That's why, brothers and sisters, you need to specify time to learn about your religion and to teach your children about their religion. It's not enough to rely on your children maybe going to Saturday school. They know how to recite a couple of surahs or maybe they taught them a bit about wudu and prayer, that's not enough. There is an amount of knowledge that every accountable person must acquire. Once he understands this amount of knowledge, he becomes from the people of discrimination, not in the meaning of that term they use it, we're talking about he has the scale by which he can discriminate between what is right and what is wrong. What is true and what is false. What is haq and what is batil. He knows how to differentiate between them. But without that knowledge, he won't be able to. And if he want to fill his mind with the knowledge he's seeing here and there on the internet, in a book, at the library, whatever, wherever he goes, he would end up in what? Cocktail of mixed knowledge. And he would have and that happened, he would have a belief different from others, different from Muslims. He would have his own set of beliefs. This is not how the knowledge of the religion is acquired. You want to learn about your religion, you need to sit in the mosque, acquire the knowledge from the trustworthy ones, I know sitting for one hour might not be comfortable for some, but this is how knowledge is acquired. Not by lying on the couch and searching the internet. You have a question, you ask, as they call it, Sheikh Google now. It doesn't work like this. You want the knowledge? It's not that way. You need to acquire it from those who are trustworthy. Otherwise, look, the most important thing that you have that will take you to paradise, look to what extent you are neglecting it. Isn't it worthy that you go to those who are trustworthy and ask them, what's the judgment of such and such and such? Because it's not about reading. You can read. Every one of us can read. It's not about reading. The knowledge is not taken through reading. Rather, it is taken in this way. This is how the Prophet taught the companions. He was able to ask one of the companions to write a book and make copies from that book and give it to the companions and say, read and learn. This is not how he taught them. They used to sit like this and spend time learning from the Prophet ﷺ as if birds are on their heads. This is how quiet they used to sit in the session of the knowledge, learning from the Prophet ﷺ. So give this knowledge a great attention, increase your knowledge and learn more and try to take some notes so you can, inshallah, 
revise what you are learning, you benefit yourself and benefit others as well. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. We say, La ilaha illallah, and we make salah on the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam.